welcome back today. Um, today, I'm going to go back to unit one, two, and three, um, just to talk about something that we missed when we were going through those units. And that something was music analysis. You're going to find in the Celebrate Theory program for every one of the levels that each unit is going to have a section where you need to analyze a piece of music. And the content that you're going to be analyzing is based on what level and what you've learned previously so far in your music theory. Um, and of course, in your discipline, you're learning the instrument as well. Um, so that a lot of that will be covered in your own lessons. Um, to start with, we had in unit one, page 11, has a menu I call you need to analyze. Um, then you've got in unit two, it's page 30. You have another item to analyze called the Little Red Wagon. And then on page 38, you have a piece called Mystery that you'll be analyzing in this level one. So when we analyze music, what do we watch for? Um, what are the questions that you're going to be asked? Well, I have a sample here. I'm just going to share it with you to give you some idea of what you'll see. And I think it's showing up on screen now. So this sample is actually from a slightly higher grade level because I didn't want to go through and give you answers to the exact items that you're doing in this book. Um, so the sonatina um, is laid out pretty much the way that you'll see it in the first book here. You'll have two lines of music to analyze. And underneath the music, they're going to have a list of questions that they want you to look for and either answer right beside the question or put a marking in the music. I'm just going to make this a little bigger and grab my pen. Um, I'm not going to look at the questions that they gave in this unit, but let's look at what they do in unit one on level one. Um, at this point, they're not going to ask you to identify a key. Later on, they will. But in your pieces, they have told you the key. So on page 11, they've indicated that the song is in C major. And this sample as well is in C major. So you would have marked off it's C major. Um, some of the questions that they'll ask you in this grade level would be, what is the time signature in the song? So you'll look at the opening of the piece to see what the time signature is. Right now, you've been dealing with, I'm just going to move this over, to in 3-4 um, time. You've also had 4-4 four, four time. Um, and you've had 2-4 time. So you'll be circling at the beginning of the opening what time signature the piece is found in. They may ask you how many beats per bar per measure will you see in the song. So remembering from our last lesson, you're going to look at the top number in your time signature to identify as four, three, or two beats per measure. In this particular piece, there are four beats per measure. And the quarter note will get the beat. Um, you may see some letters written on your music. For instance, they might say at letter D, name the note. So you look in your music for letter D, whichever note it's beside, on top of below, you're going to indicate, oh, that's a G. So you'd write in G, either on the music or if they want it right in the uh, questionnaire at the bottom, you put it in there. Um, they may ask you to tell you how many rests do you see in this music? So you're gonna to have to count, count. And there is one there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. Count through the rest and indicate, oh, there's X amount of rests in this piece of music. Another question they might ask is, can you mark off or circle a group of four notes that is in a descending scale pattern? by step. So I look for a group of four notes and I either, if they say bracket it, you bracket it. If they ask you to circle it, you circle the group of four notes carefully. Um, I'm just looking through. Oh, another one I see is how many half notes are in this passage. Now they might ask you a question like that. And when you look through the music like this one, I don't see any of our half notes. So you would just indicate in the question that no, there was zero, no half notes in this. They might ask you for quarter notes. How many quarter notes would you find in the travel clef? So you count, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and just go through the whole treble clef and find how many quarter notes you would see. Another question I'm seeing in here is 
um, tempo markings. What is the tempo marking of the selection? So tempo markings are always found at the beginning of the piece. Um, and in this case, they have allegro. So you would write in your questionnaire, you would write the tempo marking was allegro. Um, they'd ask you, can you describe the dynamic marking and the last bar of the piece? So you'd look at the last bar, you'd circle, it's F. If they asked you what it meant, you would write in, it's mezzo forte, uh, sorry, it's forte, and it means loud. If they asked you for the marking on bar five, you would circle the P and explain it's piano, and that means to play soft. Um, so dynamic markings. Oh, here's another one they love to ask. Circle the highest note in the piece. So typically it would be in the treble clef. Oh, excuse me while I just mark this off. I've got it. That bad popping up. Um, you would look at the treble clef typically because it's higher in notation in the range. And in this particular piece, I would say, oh, there it is. My highest note is G. So you'd write G. They may ask you, identify the lowest note in this piece. So you go down to your bass clef and search for the lowest note. Circle it. The lowest note in this piece, and they're using ledger lines, and we've done that in a previous lesson in this level. So the lowest note is D, and you'd either write it beside the note if they asked you to, or in the questionnaire at the bottom. Um, it's really, really important to follow directions um, in these. You have to follow and mark it exactly as they're asking. Or, for instance, if they asked you to mark in the note name beside the note on the music, but you wrote it in beside the questionnaire, you would lose some for fo not following directions, right? Um, another question you might find is, um, write in how many sharps or how many flats you see in the song. So in this piece, even though it's in C major, initially it does transpose here, which you haven't gone through yet, but you do know how to identify a sharp or a flat. So in this case, I'm seeing three sharps in the excerpt that they did give. So I write down that there were three sharps in this one. Another question you might find is, how many quarter rests that you see. So you'd be counting just quarter rests. Dynamic markings we went through. As we progress throughout the unit, there's gonna be more and more items that they ask you to identify. Uh, you might be asked to identify how many ties are seen in the piece. So that is two notes that are the same, that have the connecting line between them. So you would count the ties. They might ask you how many slurs you see. So here is a sample of a slur with two and three notes. So you would identify there's one here, there's another one here, there's another slur here, etc. and count how many slurs you're seeing. So I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea on what you may find in music analysis at this level. As I said, as you progress, you're gonna get more and more items to identify. Um, in this situation, you might also find that they're asking for um, semitones, whole tones, or skipped notes. So just really have a good grasp from a preparatory book and this level one up to this point on what items that you've learned musically and how to notate and identify, and you'll be okay with their music analysis. Please let me know if you have any further questions about this lesson or previous ones, and be sure to subscribe because I have more lessons coming up in the future. Thanks very much for watching.